Hello everyone, and welcome to the Far Carry Guide. Today we're talking about the independence. So this is part three of our little mini-series on the reworked American carriers and the changes that happened in 613 and 614. And um, you haven't seen them already, we've already spoken about the Langley and the Bogue, but today we're going to talk about the independence. So congratulations if you made it to the independence. You made it through tier four and five. Which is terrible because realistically you have no alt attack. But now, now you have a carrier that can alt attack, and this pretty much changes everything. The way you play, the approach that you go about stuff, the the, the whole game is shifted. So, uh, as we have done with our previous two videos, we're going to talk about the ship setup, the exteriors, the modules, and the captain stuff, and then we'll go into a random battle, showcase everything out, and then you can take it for yourself. Okay, so first things first, modules. When you first get the independence, what is different about it compared to the old ones or whatnot? Well, ultimately, not a great deal. Uh, we now have um, one, one, one still on the independence. It's just as like it was on the uh, Langley and the Bulk. However, our dive bombers are upgraded to tier seven, so they have a little bit more health. They have a little bit more speed, but fractionally, but it's, it's still uh, good. We have tier six fighters now compared to the tier five and the Bulk, and we still have our tier six torpedo bombers. When I say still, I mean that the ball got tier 6 and we're keeping the same planes now for our independence. The only issue here is that the independence now has to deal with tier 6, more tier 6 ships, and also tier 7 ships. Quite possibly even some tier 8 ships. So we have to be careful with how our user repeater bombers. We have slightly more hangar capacity compared to, to the uh, the Bog. The Bog's at 28, now we're up to 37 with the B-Hull. That is an extra seven planes with the B-Hull on the Independence compared to the stock A-Hull, so it's actually really important we get that. I would still probably say go after the fighter first, if choice of upgrades, then get the uh, the module of the hull, and then get the dive bombers uh, in preference of order. And if you have saved up free experience, definitely free experience the fighters and then the hull if you can. In terms of upgrades, same thing as we had with the previous ships, we go with the air groups modification once, we get the extra DPS for our fighter planes because we want to have as much air control as possible. Now strafing is an issue that's also very, very helpful. We definitely want to reduce our chance of being flooded in fire, so well, who doesn't? But there's no real other benefit to taking propulsion or steering because we're not really going to lose those because we're being shot at, things are going really bad. Um, the third upgrade is the air mods 2. The air groups modification too. Uh, this is more preferential than the uh, loading time buff because we want more fighter health, we want more ammunition. More ammunition means more strafes now. Uh, and uh, more health means uh, resilience in click on fights, resilience on being clipped in by enemy strafes, and also being able to survive in hostile AA, if anyone already say that. So that's very good. And then we have a new module, our fourth option. We don't really need propulsion or steering. We want damage control system too. So if we are on fire and flooding and we are unable to use a damage control part to put it out, or maybe we don't want to, then there's just time of being on it. It's basically a damage over time reduction. So it's a health thing. Under consumables, because alt attacks are now a thing, and because we can still be double carrier matched, uh, you know, against six and sevens, you can be thrown into games where uh, there will be Kagas or Saipans or anyone who's thinking it might be carrier sniping. It is a good idea to take damage control party too, just to um, for the load down time. Admittedly, with the active timer for 30 seconds, it's much harder to carry snipe now and it's more focused around alpha striking. At this point at tier six, I would recommend start using damage control party too. In the fours and fives, not so much. Under exteriors, because we have uh, options for firing and flooding, we now have a ship in the tier 6 uh, independence, which is actually somewhat quite quick. So going with the uh, speed signals is very good, which gets us up to 33.1 knots. The AA signal is good as well. Now we only have Bofors, which are mid-range guns. However, increasing the DPS here is very, very helpful and just um, being reliant. If our fighter player is unable to save us, then it is very powerful in this instance. Now, our main rival in this scenario is the 122 Ryujo or an enemy independence. However, we have to take into consideration that there may be tier 7 or tier 5 planes that are in the game and we can't protect ourselves with a single fighter all the time. So, taking the AA signal is quite useful. Because we have fire and flooding, we take the two signals that give us increased fire and flooding chance to maximize our damage over time potential and that is our four signals in a sort of combat scenario now you can drop the speed and you can drop the aa signal um, and you can take extra experience you can take commander experience signals that's all up to you but if you're just going for pure uh kind of combat setup this is the way i would go about it in a proactive sense pick your own flag pick your own camouflage uh choose one that perhaps gives you experience this one doesn't so i'm gonna give myself a uh, 
camouflage that does give me experience. Done. Right. Now, in terms of captain skills, it changes ever so slightly as we did the Bulk and the Langley because we now have the ability to manual attack. So if we go into the captain skills, we see that this was the normal default um, 11 point captain. So we have uh, health and servicing time, uh, same as the Japanese who took torpedo acceleration, but we'll come back to this. Three pointer because our main damage source we feel is the torpedo bombers, we want to load that quicker. Uh, we also have air supremacy, so we have that extra fighter plane, more so than the extra dive bomber, so we can have more air control and muscle around. And then the dogfighting expert, very handy if we're matched against a higher tier carrier and the extra ammunition for more strafing and that type of stuff. Now, if we wanted to go from an 11 to a 19 point captain, there are a number of options, but due to the AA, as we've mentioned before, uh, that's the AA in this particular instance is only 4 millimeters. It's not more than the 85 to trigger manual fire control for AA armament. We would want to take advanced fire training and then maybe concealment. Now, we're already pretty stealthy at 10 kilometers by sea, but if this captain is going to be used in future ships, then using AFT and using concealment will hold you in good stead. Now, the torpedo acceleration, we only have a single torpedo bomber wave. So in a, when you have multiple waves, you can do at least my technique, is you can approach from behind and then you can approach from the side. The faster torpedoes will keep the destroyer clipped in a path and if he drifts, he'll get clipped by torpedoes. And then you can drift in from the side and you can pretty much kill them. Now we only have a single torpedo bomber wave for the Independence, for the Ranger and the Lexington and the Essex as well. So as a result of that, we can't realistically cross drop. So the technique in this particular instance when we're manual dropping rather than auto with auto we would take torpedo acceleration like the ball and the langley because you click on the thing you adjust the angle and then you want the torps to move in as fast as possible but with if we take away torpedo acceleration we can actually drop really close to the ship in question provided you're not suffering from a large amounts of latency and in that particular sense it's better rather than take torpedo acceleration or to not take it in, in that sense and then what would you do instead well you might take x rear gunner but now we're no longer in the four or five bracket everyone's going to be strafing so realistically speaking adrenaline rush might be our better choice because if you if you take damage especially in the six seven brackets where there's no defensive fire on carriers so you are more likely to sniping being able to turn around your planes faster is quite beneficial so in this particular instance this would normally be my standard go to 11 points but because because it's American cars, it's slightly different. I'm actually going to redistribute the points. And we're going to take aircraft surfing expert. We're then going to take AR. Uh, we'll take torpedo arm and expertise. Air supremacy. And we'll go back for 11th point on dogfighting. If I had a 19 point captain purely on the independence, I would then probably take advanced fire training next to push out the range of our fairly good uh, mid tier kind of buffer guns, so from 3.5 to probably 4.2. And then I would take concealment just to kind of drop our, our, our visual range down. You know? So I probably wouldn't take basic fire training because there are no points for it. And we want to use our three points to load our torpedo bombers faster. Uh, if in a ranked or competitive scenario, we might drop the torpedo armor and expertise and take basic fire training for just maximize self defense in the A, but we're not really going into that because it's unlikely independence will be a good uh, ranked type of ship. So, that being said, this is our sh now captain and ship all probably set up. Let's go into random battle and give it a go. Right. What do you think? Double carry game? Single carry game? You can get pretty crazy at tier 6, that's for sure. Alright, here we go. So, the main difference from the 4 5s, if you've watched the previous episodes here, is that because we can alt attack, we can be far more accurate with our bombs. Um, and we can be more skillful in what ships we go after. Destroyers will still be tricky. So, oh my god. Double carrier game. And we are underdogs. So it's Visual Independence versus Ranger Saipan. Now our Ranger, which is going to be 112, the Saipan, probably going to be 220, but he might be three fighters. This is as difficult as it gets for the Independence. We have tier 7 uh, battleships. So it's a 5 6 7 game. We're not against tier 8s. That's great. But the Saipan is going to make this difficult. 
we have to be careful of our playing strength. We don't have huge reserves. You don't get better reserves until the Ranger, because we'll, we'll jump up from 37 to like 72 as soon as you hit the Ranger, so like a third plane wave. So right now, we have one plane wave that will take off, and then one spare, and that's it. So we need to be also careful about A, who we attack, and B, how we go about um, protecting our planes from, let's be clear here, that Saipan player. The Ruja we don't worry too much about, uh, because he's probably playing 1-2-2, two, two, so we could out-muscle his fire plane. And with good strafes, we could probably go after his bombers as well if he keeps them clumped up. The issue here is the Saipan. The Saipan can strafe, exit strafe, it's got two fire waves to our one, they're tier 9s to our tier 6s, so there's a great speed and balance here, so we need to be really careful. And it kind of comes down to how good this ranger player is. Is he upgraded? Has he got all these captain skills? Because the side pan is a premium carrier, which means you can move your enterprise, sorry, you can move your midway captain onto the side pan, so yeah, this is going to be tricky. In terms of AA, Queen Elizabeth's good AA, New York doesn't, the Nagatos will be slightly better, so we need to be a little bit careful how we approach. So that is one of the that's the tier 6, uh, so he does not have air supremacy. And he's actually quite far out. Um, yeah, there's a tier 9, that's a siphon fire. I was going to try and strafe him, but he pulled back and then there's a siphon fire waiting for me. I can't be that aggressive with my fire plane. It's just not going to work. So this is the side pan uh, trying to cross drop. This destroyer player is overturning. Oh, that's a good dodge though. He might just live though. Yeah, he will live. <laughs> On our side, we don't maybe have a Cleveland that might be good with AA. I can't. No, I can choose to try and fight the Ryuzhou's fire plane. What I can't do is fight the... Saipan, oh hello, boom, that's the thing, oh my god, you're letting yourself think, he's basically, he got, he got head on strafed, then he got exit strafed, if, he's probably going to exit strafe right on top of my fire, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that, oh no, 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 okay, clip two, clip two, oh, we got all four, we got all four, suck it, Right, get out of the Belfast AA now. I could strafe him, I'm not gonna. I'm already, we're already ahead. <laughs> so, so we're gonna back off for now. That's the uh, Ryuzhou's uh, bombers. Um, I'm gonna try and see, that's not really anything. So we're gonna go this way. And we're going to have my fire go that way as well. And the fire can deal with his or try and strafe his bombers. I might try and go for the Konigsberg, but I don't think I'm going to get the opportunity to bomb anything. So we're just going to keep going after his, his bombers first. Because this fire plane belongs to the side pan is in the middle of the map. And that's out of position. And he's actually going to bring his bombers back. Nope, oh, good. Our friendly A. I just don't want to get strafed. I'll click it. Because I don't want to get like, caught off guard. His fire's there. Right, he exit straight out. He, he broke out. We can afford to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm going to make sure my bombers go back into friendly space. I don't want to go over the Konigsberg. Uh, it's, it's, it's not worth it. So I'm going to bring him back. Got to be patient here. We might lose this game fairly quickly, but the thing is, I have so few fire planes. If I mess up once and I lose that engagement, I've prevented his ability to bomb, so he's flown back. So now we're just gonna chill out with some friendly ships, AA, and see if any what can be done. So like his fire's thinking, oh he's down to two planes. I don't want to go near the fur attacker. If anything, I could maybe even threaten the fur attacker with my own bombers. Oh. I mean these two ships are perfect to go for as well, the New York and the Konigsberg, but um, air control is an issue here. I need to be careful. Now his single fire might wanna click on it. Oh, hello. Yeah, I thought he would... Yeah, that's what I thought. 
and we're gonna pull them back because we've essentially we've baited I knew I was going to strafe my own planes. Oh my god, and he's trying to clip me. Ah, see, there we go. I'm going to have to pull those torpedo bombers back. I thought he would follow them, and it was like, yeah, I'll clip some of my torpedo bombers, but it'll be fine because... I would kill these fires off instead. But that, that didn't happen. Right, got those fires, boom, or, or help with the A. So the A from these guys is being very, very helpful. Uh, hopefully the Cleveland can help deal with these guys. I'm going to try and dive bomb, but again, this fighter's probably not going to let me. Nope, he's not going to let me. He's going to back off here. One of the annoying things about the Saipan is obviously they've got really good plane reserves because it's wave size. Got that. Where's this fighter? Down there. Is he moving? I'm watching the minimap here. Got it. Cool. Let's move back out. I want to go for his uh, torpedo bomber just in case he tries to escape. Because every plane is precious at this, at this tier. So, you know, because he's going to have fewer of them later on in the game. That's great. So now we're going to work for the dive bomber. I'm actually going to strafe it because we should be able to kill it before he gets there rather than clicking on it. It's the difference from the tier 4s and 5s is that we can now strafe when we kill before he can even get the bombs off. Right, now that being done, uh, these are our last torpedo bombers, we don't have any spares, but the New York and the Konigsberg are perfect targets for us to attack, so we're going to go down and deal with them. While that's happening, I'm going to go for this dive bomber, or spot the Fubuki, so that he can't come around the corner and get torps off. And the Fubuki's AA is reasonably low, so we'll try and maybe interest... No, I'm not going to bother. I was going to say... I'm Okay, so these... Well, I'm going to send the fires anyway, because I want to make sure these, this kill goes in. Because you see these, these uh, Saipan fighters are incoming right now. Okay, long range drop. Pull it around. See, he tried to strafe. Uh, he's trying to get both at the same time. So we got Konigsberg. He's going to try and strafe, I can tell this. Oh, no, 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 no. Bugger off. <laughs> Leave my torpedo bombers alone, I need them. I've got so few torpedo bombers, I need to be so careful. All right. Boom, I'm going to exit, I'm going to strafe into his. <laughs> so, so he killed off the friendly fighters, which does my job for me. I lost a single fighter, and I think... And I'm going to try and escape now towards my friendly Cleveland. Gonna watch him like a hawk, because if he accelerates, he's going to try to strafe me from behind. Now he's, he's backing off. So now we're going to pull him back, get fresh ammunition, uh, load up the plane waves again, and then we'll go back again. But this is, this is challenging stuff. Uh, but our team is pulling the slack. Look at this. Most of their team is actually dead. There doesn't need to be many ships in the sink. There's like five ships. Of which one, two, three, and four, which the last one's the carrier, so we can actually go forward and dive now. The risk is, of course, we could be attacked. We could be uh, sniped because we don't have a defensive fire um, with all these bombers, but it looks like they're going to go after the Konigsberg instead, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, how long is it going to take to get the fighter turned around? Four seconds, so we can get the two bombers off first. Now I'm going to use my AA. Now it is, because we don't have advanced fire training, it's only 3.5. Now, in this particular instance, I'm going to try and get 3.5. It just was, but now isn't. So the Haruna's going to get clipped. Cleveland's not close enough. Should He should survive. Um, now, for us, we've almost got a filter Peter on the wave, so that's great. Uh, he's, he's not dropping in advance. He's actually auto-dropping, I think. And the island's going to eat some of those as well. Oh, wait, no, he didn't drop. He can't drop now. He's too close to the, he's too close to the rocks, so that's, that's going to be immediate... Oh, I take that back. Well, he's too close, though. Yeah. Okay, ooh, there's a, <laughs> there's a reissue right there. That's fine. So I'm going to put my fighters uh, next to the Nelson, because that's what they're going to try and kill first. Uh, I'm going to have the bombers go over me, I think. Use my AA. The issue is I don't get shot at by these guys, so I'm going to go behind uh, the island on my approach south. Now that's a tier 9 fighter who's been clipped. 
Now he can exit strafe, but it's only going to be with uh, two planes. I don't really want to go near him and be exit strafed on top of. Okay, so good. So the AA killed off that fighter group. Fantastic. Don't really need to do anything. So what I can do is maybe protect my bombers. Go down this way. He's trying to use his fires to stop these bombers from the ranger. Fair enough. There's the reuse. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, we'll go for that. Boom, I'll click on that. Now back off. There's no point doing anymore. So he's going to start turning away, I think. Oh, maybe he's trying to turn in. Give yourself enough distance. Oh, you know what? I'm making a mistake here. I don't have to put acceleration. I should, I could, I should be dropping much closer, or I should be trying anyway. But anyway, that's not bad. It's not bad. He'll damage control that now, though. But we should be able to get him with a follow-up attack. The question is, do we have enough planes left over? We'll have enough dive bombers, uh, but we'll only have three torpedo bombers. And we're going to bring our fires now back up to our friendly ships. That's great. That's good stuff. So we got those two Saipan torpedo bombers. Uh, he's tagged by the... No, he's... Ex no, he's... Sorry, he was tagged to the capital fire. I'm going to try and strafe him. Oh, we got one. And the AA got the other one. Oh, we got another one. Yes. So the damage reduction on the Nelson is massive. I'm going to stay away from his fire. There's absolutely no point in me attacking whatsoever. De Cleveland's defensive fire coming in absolutely golden. But the only reason why we're still in this. Excellent, the Gatto's down. So again, we don't need to fight this fighter plane. Absolutely no reason. There's no secondaries in the side plan. Ryuz was pretty beat up. So we are going to try and go for the Charlie capture point. Do not, like I say, need to fight these guys. So I'm going to back off. Now I'm going to maybe try and lure the fighters away from the wounded Ryuzho. Although the Ryuzho is going at full speed here. I'm not sure I'll be able to get him. Because I want to entertain these... F oh, hello. Uh-oh, I've missed the turn. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's terrible ship handling by me. So he sees probably my bombers. He's thinking, oh, okay, what do I do here? I'm also a sitting duck now because I could be bombed super easily. Which looks like that's what he's thinking of doing. Uh, shoot him, please. Okay, so I'm going to move the bombers away from me. He's going to try and maybe strafe. Um, I'm going to exit on top of me. I'm going to use my friendly A, otherwise I'm just going to lose that outright. I'm going to keep the AA on the torpedo bombers. Uh-oh. Maybe I can... Yes! Nice! As long as I go forwards and I don't take all three, I only eat two. That's fine. So I'll put the A on him now. Put out the flooding. So he's only got a single fire there. He's not using two because he's just trying to set my other bombers. That's fine. I'm going to go at full speed now. There's no point going for the cat. We're going to win this anyway. I'm going to kill off that plane. And I'm just going to try... I'm going to feign an attack, but I'm going to double back. And then I drop. Because if he's trying to strafe me, that's the only way he can stop all the bombs. He can't, so I'm kind of juking it as well as I can. Nice. Yes! That was a good game. Yeah. Man, we were total underdogs there. Ranger did fairly well. We need to compliment him. That's about as challenging as it's going to be. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration of what to do and what not to do. Um, I'm not really going into any great detail about how to strafe or the angles or the uh, whatnot. But you see, the independents can be fairly competent. If you play it well and if you're smart with it, you can not go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Saipan. I mean, let's be clear here, the Cleveland helped us a lot here uh, by clipping off planes. Uh, but we used him as a linchpin. He is good AA, so we flew around him to kind of keep us safe. He still did 51,000 damage. We got two kills, you know. We helped our team. We even got 19 plane kills there, even though it was a double CV game when we were down tiered. Right.
Anyway, this concludes uh, the episode on the independence. If you haven't already watched the previous two episodes on the Langley Bog, I recommend you go do that to have some fun. Uh, coming up next is the Ranger, and uh, until then, goodbye.